Hi friends, Molten here and welcome back to this opening video on the Hungarian attack, which in my opinion is a very underutilized and underrated opening choice against the Sicilian defense. And I'm going to walk you through some of the ideas, some of my favorite setups, and also talk you through some specific variations that may help you as well. But before we get into that, I also mentioned that our partners at Chess Mood are also having a big sale for the next week, and I'll include a link down below, which you can go on to check out some of their fantastic courses and if you use the link you'll also help support this channel. So without further ado let's roll intro and get started. So the Hungarian variation is a sideline of the Sicilian which is specifically reached mainly from the move knight f3 and then black playing d6 here but you can also reach it from knight c6 sometimes as in the main game um, via transposition. So after the move pawn to d4, pawn takes, instead of to capturing with the knight, here the idea is to go queen takes d4, and this can be really annoying for specifically, say, knight off or straight up dragon players who want to get into some of their mainline variations because this bypasses that and gets into slightly um, different positions as we'll see. So the main move here for black is typically to go knight to c6. They can also delay it, but we'll probably play into the same structure, which I'll show you in the rest of the video. So the first line I want to show you in this position is one which starts with the move queen to e3. So this one was popular for a time, but then people found a remedy as black and then they stopped playing it as much nowadays. So after the move pawn to g6, Point to h3. This was popularized by Carlsen who played a very nice game with the white pieces against I believe Gawain Jones. Here the setup idea was after bishop uh, to g7 to go into a Moroxy bind with the move bishop to e2. Knight goes to f6 and then pawn goes to c4. So we'll see this setup a lot in this opening where we try to put the pawns on these two squares clamping down on the center and grabbing a lot of space. Now, this can work uh, quite well sometimes, but in this specific position, we will find that our queen is a little bit awkwardly placed. Before it was okay if um, black plays quietly, because often we can reroute our queen back to d2, play the bishop to d b2, and then later on um, get our setup with say a3, rook d1, rook c1, b4, knight d5, and white is doing quite comfortable here. There, um, as in this particular game which Hikaru played which went on um, as such and for example he managed to trade off these bishops got into a very favorable middle game position where this bishop is actually quite good once we've recaptured with the pawn on d5 versus the knight and he has this uh, large pass pawn majority on the queen side but instead of all this um, I think black could have improved by playing the move knight to d7 right away and after the move knight to d7, knight to c3, knight to c5. Here after the move rook d1, I recommend black go for this setup, which keeps the light square bishop back and goes straight for the move pawn to f5. Um, there was a game here played by Ferruja, which went straight f5. And that was um, led to a, a good position for black. There's also another game where black started with the move pawn to a5. And after the move bishop to d2 then played f5, pawn takes, pawn takes. And here black got a fantastic position in the center uh, with the pawns rolling up the board. And later went on to win with a nice attack. So because of this I don't really recommend this idea with pawn to h, uh, queen dropping back to e3 and pawn h3 anymore. Instead recently we've seen some other ideas crop up. Um, one player who plays this quite a lot is Grandmaster Demchenko with the white pieces who prefers to play the move Bishop to C4 and one game against a strong Russian Grandmaster Serrano went Knight to E7, Rook to D1, Castles, Knight C3 and here white played the move Queen to F4 and actually rerouted the Queen to the King side. Knight to e5, we had captures, captures, queen to h4, and now we see white generating a pretty dangerous attack. The bishop coming to h6 next, and we see how this attack pans out. 
uh, bishop g5, we have to move pawn to f4, and then the game continued with pawn to f5, trying to bring this light squared bishop into the game. Um, in a lot of Sicilian positions, when you bring this bishop out to c4, b3, it's often stuck by this pawn on e6. So we see a lot of the time white will try to push this pawn to f4, f5 to try and uh, break that bishop and bring it back into the game. Um, at the same time, we're threatening f6 next move. So black has to definitely be careful here. So bishop h6 was played, and after the move knight takes b3, we had bishop takes on g7, king takes, f6 check, king went back, capture back, check, king went across, and after the move pawn to b4, uh, white continued on to win a nice uh, game online when this pawn on f6 proved to be a, a real thorn in black's side. So this is the main option nowadays, but if we go back to the start, after the move knight c6, which was the game I played in this position, after the move pointed d6, we actually reached a transposition. And I'm going to recommend this line with bishop to b5 instead. It's one I prefer to play instead of this um, queen to e3 move. And after the move bishop to d7, bishop takes, bishop takes. Here you have two main options. One I really like is the move pawn to c4, uh, reaching this Maroxy bind position in the center. Now, often play will continue along the lines of knight f6, knight c3, black will try to go for a sort of dragon setup with his bishop, but we have a very comfortable Maroxy bind, and the position resembles that of an accelerated dragon, if any of you are familiar with that. And here, I think we have a very nice version because we've sort of traded off our light squared bishop, which is often a bad piece in this particular opening. If you can trade off as well the dark squared bishop, that would also be uh, favorable for white's position. And typically, we want to go for uh, some ideas of putting the knight into d5 later on, trying to get uh, black to capture, maybe to capture back with the e pawn, and then start to put pressure along the e file or with our poor majority. Uh, this is an opening which um, Jeffrey Zhang, a strong uh, American grandmaster, has played with the white pieces to um, be uh, quite successful with. So after move bishop h6 here, uh, white was able to exchange the bishops and go on to um, slowly, slowly develop a um, advantage. So this is one of these positions where you can slowly just squeeze your opponent and if that's your style of play then it can be very very effective. Uh, the re reason why I didn't like this variation as much anymore is because of this move by black here. He can play the move pawn to f5 which one my opponent played against me uh, at the time and I was quite surprised because I, I didn't think such a move could be played. But in fact, black is um, totally fine after f5, and f5 is a very strong move here, trying to go for counterplay right away. The idea is that if you take, then after the move queen a5, let's say you play knight d2, queen takes f5, castles, uh, black will just play e5, queen e3, uh, continue on with knight f6, maybe castle queen side, with some very um, unclear play in the position, but white doesn't have the typical so Maroxy bind and slow grindy play which um, white is actually looking for when he plays c4 and for this reason um, I prefer uh, the game continuation but it's definitely still perfectly playable I mean the position is fine for both sides of course but yeah I prefer knight c3 as in this particular game knight f6 bishop g5 e6 and castles, bishop to e7, rook to e1, so this is the main position in this opening, and after the move castles, king b1, the idea for white is to drop the queen back to either d3 or to d2, and reroute the knight to d4, and then slowly push our pawns up on the king side to get an um, uh, attack on, on that side. For example, if black moves the queen to a5 here, it doesn't really matter. We're going to drop the queen back to d2 anyway. Actually, this is even better because now we're threatening knight d5, which can be a very annoying threat to deal with. 
for example let's say b5 knight to d5 and we have this nasty discovered attack on the queen where we take the bishop we check um, therefore in this particular game my opponent played the move queen to c7 I dropped the queen back to d2 anyway but you can definitely drop the queen back to d3 that's also a very a popular move to sort of stop b5 from being played in a lot of positions but I'm not particularly worried about b5 because we have a specific idea in mind for example let's say after rook c8 this will happen in the game knight to d4 our idea is that after b5 we're going to uh, ignore the pawn so we're not going to take the pawn unless we absolutely have to we're not interested in opening lines for black's pieces along the b file instead we play the move pawn to f3 and let's say after b4 knight to e2 we're going to reroute this knight to the king side instead and this knight on e2 is going to be a very useful attacking piece as you'll see so for example after a5 g4 let's say bishop to e8 so i've had a lot of success with this particular maneuver where the knight goes to g3 and the knight actually ends up on the h5 square later on so for example h4 here we continue to develop um, an attack on the king side at the same time we're defending our bishop here pawn to a4 is played so we have an opposite side castle attack but we're not pushing any of our pawns to make sure that white's um, queen side is quite solid if he black pushes then we'll just push past here we continue our attack with this idea which we've been trying to plan which is knight to h5 and after the move pawn to a3 which was what was played in the game uh, I simply took an f6 first to create some weaknesses there now if bishop takes I take uh, back if pawn takes my idea was to go uh, queen to h6 and now we have basically an unstoppable mating threat on g7 bishop f8 is met by knight f6 and mate on h7 to re recapture the bishop and then we go knight takes bishop to open up the king side and double the pawns then we close things up on the queen side with the move pawn to b3 my opponent played the move rook to a5 and here the best way to continue the attack is to straight up open up everything on the king side with the move pawn to g5 but it's definitely important that you play this move pawn to b3 to close things up first before you start your own attack so after the move pawn to g5 pawn takes <clears throat> rook to g1 was played knight h6 pawn takes pawn takes and now try to um, pause the video again if you want to work out what could be the best move here for white or a good move for white to continue the um, attack because there are a couple of different ideas and for those of you who found this very useful move to know in the Sicilian it's the move knight to f5 then well done after the move knight to f5 we block the defense of the queen from the g pawn and after pawn takes there's actually nothing I believe after queen takes so you do have to be careful how you recapture here because after queen takes king goes across and I, I couldn't actually find anything in the game here for white but instead of this what you could do is the move rook takes and after rook takes I thought this was just a lot simpler um, and even if black does have a defense it's very very uh, difficult to spot the idea after rook takes is that after the king moves rook takes f5 and now if the queen moves somewhere then we want to go let's say rook takes rook and if the queen takes we go queen h6 and now king g8 is met by rook check and then queen king e7 is met by queen takes d6 therefore after this he played pawn to d5 but then after the move queen h6 king e7 um, black resigned after rook e5 because we're picking up uh, too much material here so i thought i'd share this idea with you um it's something i've played with and had a lot of success with the idea is relatively simple to m wait and maneuver your knight from the queen side and use it as a um, 
big attacking piece on the king side. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Thank you.